Hey everyone, I am so excited. This is Tina from Tina's Crafty Crochet again. And today I have gotten permission from um, Pasta and Patchwork, um, Miss Eileen Olsker. I can't pronounce her name. I'm so sorry if I butchered it. Um, she designed this beautiful granny square. It's called the Triple Puff Granny Square. And I'm going to link her for this pattern um, in the description box below. And I printed it out and it was quite a few pages because I printed all the pictures as well. And as you can see, it's wrote in UK terms and I live in the US. So she was wonderful to put it in brackets. I just went through with a pencil and marked on my written pattern. And it calls for a 2.5 millimeter or a C hook. And it's a really tiny one and fingering cotton yarn. Well, I wanted a slightly bigger square, so I went with a different yarn weight and hook, but I am following her directions completely. And <clears throat> I am going to be using, as you can see, my schemes are kind of already all whopper jawed because I could not wait. I had to, you know, get right in there and you know work on it but i'm using a g which is a 4.25 millimeter hook if you can see that there we go and of course you will need scissors or snips and yarn needles you also need those um the color the yarn i'm using is i love this yarn from hobby lobby and I am using Glacier and Gray Mist and then Peacock, which I absolutely love this color, and then Turquoise. And I'm just going to move these off to the side real quick and we are going to get started. Now, this is what one of my looks like one of my squares and um i'm going to do a big afghan with this sort of like a cathedral window and i've done uh four different combinations in the mix and then solids of each of the four colors and i'm going to mix them up and make them all kind of fancy but my um square instead of being four by four like the pattern Gage says mine are six and a half by six and a half but this is what we're making today I'm so super excited so let's get started we are going to start here in the center with the peacock and what we're going to do is I'm going to find the end of my yarn and we're going to make a slip stitch so or slip knot I'm sorry okay so we have our slip knot made and we're going to insert our hook and pull it tight and we are going to chain six and it's one two three four five six now we have our six and we are going to slip stitch into this very first chain that we made. So we yarn over, pull through, and then pull through again. And this makes a little hole for us. So now the pattern says to do the puff stitch eight times in this hole. So, I have a video of the puff stitch. Um, this is the triple puff stitch. And normally in a puff stitch, you only uh, yarn in and go in twice. And you'll see what I'm fixing to talk about. Um, but with this one, we're doing it three times. That's why it's called a triple. So, I pull my loop up just a little bit because I want my puff stitch to be kind of tall. And then I yarn over. And then we go into the hole yarn over, pull up a loop. Make sure you come back up to your height. So that's one, yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, 
and then yarn over, go in, pull up a loop. Now, you should have seven loops on your hook. So let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now what you do to finish off the pit, puff stitch is you yarn over and you pull through all seven loops. Sometimes it can be tricky. And then to secure it, you chain one. And you do the chain one after each puff stitch. So let's do some more. Let's go. So that's our first one, our second one, our third one. Once you conquer this stitch, it is fairly simple. I can uh, actually watch television while I crochet this pattern. It's really, really simple. Once you get the hang of it, you just have to, you know, get your um, rhythm down. That's the word I'm looking for. And notice the chain one afterwards. So we have three. And let's do this again. Two and three. That makes four. And you just, you know, scoot them around on that chain if you need a little more room. Because they will be kind of close together. So that's one, two, and three. And then pull through all three. And chain one. Let's go one, two, and three, and pull through. Oh, I may be hung up. And see that? That sometimes happens. And since this is crochet, you just pull it out and try it again. That's the beauty about crochet. If you mess up or get hung or you know, some catastrophe happens, just frog it, take a deep breath, and keep going. Unlike when I knit and I drop a stitch, I have to take out the whole thing because I can't ever fix it. So I have a lot more patience with crochet. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we need two more. Yarn over, in through the hole, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, in through the hole, yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, into the hole, yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, go through all seven, and chain one. And we need one more in there. So, let's get that one in there. Two, and three, and chain one. Now, we are to slip stitch into this first chain here and then you are to I chain one and then I cut my tail and pull it through and that locks it in because now we're moving to the next color which is going to be our gray mist so that's your first circle and let's take our gray mist and we make a slip knot, insert our hook, and now we are going to insert into any chain one space. So let's go right here. I like to try to keep all my tails kind of together. And we are going to attach by slip stitch. So you stick your hook in, yarn over, pull up a loop. And pull through that and don't forget to kind of pull that hook loop on your hook up a little bit because we're doing puff stitches again this is our first increase and we are going to put two puff stitch into each chain so yarn over pull up yarn over pull up yarn over pull up Yarn over, pull through all seven, and chain one. And then we're going to put another one in that same exact place. Right there. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, you continue around in the chains. And um, you yarn over and go into your next chain one space. And do your next puff stitch. Remember to do two in each chain one space. And I will meet you back around and join. Okay, we are ready to do our last puff stitch. And we're just going to go in and do that. And chain one. And then we're going to slip stitch right in the top of that first chain. Right there. And I'm going to chain one and cut and I like to leave a pretty good tail so I can sew it in because I like to sew three different directions back and forth so it doesn't come out real easy and next we're doing our final increase round of puff stitch and we will be using the glacier and we're going to start it the same exact way with a slip knot on our hook and you see how we have our V's and in our open spot we're going to attach into this chain in between the pairs with a slip stitch and then we're going to do one puff triple puff into this stitch and then in the V there's a chain right there what we're going to do is we're going to put two puff stitches into this spot this is the increase anytime you add two stitches into one stitch from the previous row that is an increase so you see our pattern we're going one in between two in the V and that makes another V I want you to continue around and I'll meet you back up to join okay I am down to needing to put my last increase in this last stitch so we'll do that chain one and then I will slip, slip stitch to join and cut my yarn pull my tail and I'm just I just love the way this looks and this is so fluffy I love it it gives a great texture now we're going to start our round where it squares it up to become a square and then we're going to do traditional granny square um, stitches so we are going to go back to our gray mist and we're going to do a slip knot and place it on our hook we're using a standing double crochet to attach here and I'm the type of person that I like to leave all my tails till the end. I don't like to stop and sew in tails and all that. So it's going to look like a little scared octopus or something back here. Um, so to do a standing double crochet, what you need to do, you have your hook and your loop on it. And you have your tail. I like to grab my tail with my last two fingers. Hold that loop steady yarn over and then hold it grab your center and we are going to insert inside the V any V you want you insert pull your yarn to the back yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two and yarn over and pull through two that is our standing double crochet 
So um, I'm going to take this off and show you this again. We're going to start with a slip knot. We're going to insert our hook. Grab the tails with the same hand you hold the hook. Hold your knot, your loop in place. Yarn over, hold that in place. Insert into your V, your stitch. Pull your yarn to the back. Yarn over, pull up a loop. See, now look what I did. I let it slip off. That's why you need to hold it. And you go in there. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two, just like a normal double crochet. Now the pattern calls for two double crochet into this stitch. So we're going to do that, and then we will chain one, and we are going to skip this one and go into the center of the next V. And we're going to put three single crochets. So insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And we do that three times. And then we're going to chain one again. And then we're going to skip this one and go into the middle of this one. And we are going to do our granny square corner, which is three double crochets. One, two, and three, and then chain three. One, two, three, and then three more double crochets into the same stitch. And that makes our first corner. We will chain one, skip three single crochets into the next V, and then we will chain one, skip, we're making a corner here, so we're doing three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet chain one and we'll repeat this all the way around and I will meet you back up before we get ready to join because it will be a little tricky the first time you do it so I'll drop the camera I'm so sorry I'll be right back okay um, we have finished our last three single crochets and you see we have all this space here. Well, we are going to chain one and we still need to put more double crochets into this corner. So we yarn over, insert our hook and put three double crochet. And then our chain three. And then there's only two on this side from when we attach. So we will yarn over and do one more double crochet into the top of that first standing double. We will slip stitch. Cut our yarn and now we have the start of our square. We've got our circle and we've got the basis for our granny square. So now we're going to attach the turquoise. That's all my little squids over there from my squares I already have made. We're going to do a slip knot. And we're going to do standing double crochet to attach. And what you need to do is you attach in any chain one space. So we're just going to go in here, yarn over, 
yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two. And then we're going to do, just like on the previous round, another double crochet. And then we're going to chain one. We're not using any single crochets. Uh, we're doing the granny square stitch, which is three double crochet into every chain one space. And we will do the three double crochet, chain three, three double crochet into every corner. So that's what we're going to do on this one. And then our chain three. And then three more double crochet. And then our chain one. And we do three double crochet into this chain one space. Chain one. And we hop right on over to this one. Now you continue this around and I will meet you back up and we will join. Okay, I've done the final corner and my chain one and we're getting ready to join and we only have two double crochet here so we're going to yarn over and put one double crochet and then we're going to slip stitch in the top of the standing double and then I'm going to chain one and cap my yarn tighten it up and now we are going to attach the glacier again <clears throat> excuse me it's snowing and it's got me all ugh. so we're going to do a slip knot insert our hook and we're going to do a standing double crochet to attach into any chain one space so I'm just going to start right here by the corner that's my favorite and we're going to do it just like the previous round and we'll put two here and chain one and you'll notice that there are more chain one spaces on this row because we're increasing so it's done exactly like the previous row and most general granny squares at this point so I am going to whip this row out and I'll meet you back at we will join on our last color and do our final two rows. Okay, now we're done with that row and you fasten off just like you did the two previous rows and we are going to finish with our border which consists of two rows, single crochet and we're going to start with a slip knot And I like, I found that I like to attach in the chain one space with a slip stitch. And then I'm going to chain one and I'm going to single crochet in that same chain one space. And then in every stitch across, so that's one two and three and every chain one space you need a single crochet so this row is really easy you can keep count of how many stitches you've got and how many you're doing and make sure you get one in every stitch because you'll have your three and your chain one and now when we get to the corner here what we're going to do in this first round of border is let's get there in our single crochet 
and this is our chain three this is our corner we are going to put two single crochet right there in that corner we're going to chain one and then we're going to put two more single crochet in that same chain space and then we're going to start down our next side now sometimes in the corner that first stitch can hide from you so just pull it around and push it you know like you do when you put a bunch of uh, stitches in a circle starting chain or in a magic ring you just you know manipulate them to where you can find all of your stitches and let's do one more corner and then we will come back and join and I'll show you how to do the corners on the final round so we are to our corner again pull out a little more yarn we're going to put two single crochets a chain one and two more to turn that corner and right here is our first stitch on this side and you know it got a little in there so we just manipulated them over to find it and you just continue around like this and I will meet you at the join and we will do the last row okay I have the last three stitches to go of this row <clears throat> And now we're going to slip stitch into the top of the first single crochet to join it. And then we're going to chain one and single crochet in that same stitch. Now we are going to put one in every stitch around. going to go all the way to the corner okay now here's where our corner starts so this is the first stitch in the corner the second stitch in the corner and here's our chain one space so what we're going to do is we're going to go into that chain one and we're going to put a single crochet a chain one a single crochet all in that one chain one space and then we're going to go down the next side You just keep single crocheting across gives it a nice pretty finished border I'm going to show you one more corner Okay, we well, got one and two, and here's our chain one space. And we're gonna put. Let's get in the right spot there. There we go. One single crochet, chain one, one single crochet, 
and then we're going to do the other two sides just exactly the same and I'll meet you back up at the join okay I am down to the last three stitches and I am going to join this with a slip stitch like I have every other row we're going to slip stitch into the first single crochet but instead of chaining one and cutting and pulling it through I'm going to pull my loop up just a little bit and then I'm going to turn my work around and I am going to stick my hook into this next stitch right here from the back to the front grab that loop pull it through and just hang on to it for a second cut my tail and now pull that to lock it in and it's a, like a seamless join this will help me when I'm building my blanket it'll make it uh, not as bulky as a knot would be per se now this has all of its little tails still done and this is my stack that I've started this is what it looks like on the back after the tails are all tucked in and I have worked up a few more this one I have them labeled because I have the pattern already made out this one is just a different variation of how the colors were put together I have two multicolored like this four and I have two with just three colors in it so that gives me four multicolors and I'm using four colors completely and this is number six here I have to label them so I can put them together with my pattern and these are just the solid ones they're still gorgeous still gorgeous this is the gray mist the turquoise the peacock and the glacier and I mean you can use any combination you want um, or do them solid uh, I really think they're beautiful and especially, you know, together, the solid and the combinations. Um, I'm going to link pasta and patchwork um, in the description box below and give us a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll link my Facebook page down below as well. As always, until next time.